Welcome to Daily Scripture and Meditation with Shirley Celis Jackson. We begin as always in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Tuesday, the 22nd of February 2022 of the seventh week in Ordinary Time is the Feast of the Chair of St. Peter the Apostle. Our Daily Prayer Lord Jesus, your love brings freedom and pardon. Fill me with your Holy Spirit and set my heart free with your merciful love that nothing may make me lose my temper, ruffle my peace, take away my joy, nor make me bitter towards anyone. Amen. Introduction to the Liturgy of the Word The Feast of the Chair of St. Peter commemorates the teaching authority of the Vicar of Christ. The Catechism teaches that it is this magisterium's task to preserve God's people from deviations and defections and to guarantee them the objective possibility of professing the true faith without error so that the people of God abide in the truth that liberates. Catholic Catechism 890 How blessed is the Church of Rome on which the Apostles poured forth all their doctrine along with their blood. Tertullian The chair represents the Pope's mission as guide of the entire people of God. Celebrating the chair of Peter means attributing a strong spiritual significance to it and recognizing it as a privileged sign of the love of God, says Pope Benedict XVI. Perhaps it would be a good thing if every Christian, certainly if every priest, could dream once in his life that he were Pope and wake from that nightmare in a sweat of agony, says Monsignor Ronald Knox. The Epistle As a fellow presbyter and witness to the sufferings of Christ. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter, chapter 5, Verse 1 Beloved, I exhort the presbyters among you as a fellow presbyter and witness to the sufferings of Christ and one who has a share in the glory to be revealed. Tend the flock of God in your midst, overseeing not by constraint, but willingly, as God would have it, not for shameful profit, but eagerly. Do not lord it over those assigned to you, but be examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd is revealed, you will receive the unfading crown of glory. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 23 Verse 1 Responsorial The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. In burdened pastures, He gives me repose. Beside restful waters, He leads me. He refreshes my soul. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil. For you are at my side with your rod and your staff that give me courage. You spread the table before me in the sight of my foes. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Only goodness and kindness follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for years to come. The Lord is my shepherd. 
there is nothing I shall want. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. You are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church. The gates of the nether world shall not prevail against it. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Gospel You are Peter. I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew chapter 16 verse 13. When Jesus went into the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say that the Son of Man is? They replied, Some say John the Baptist, others Elijah, still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter said in reply, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus said to him in reply, Blessed are you, Simon son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you but my heavenly Father. And so I say to you, You are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of the netherworld shall not prevail against it. I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Meditation of the Day The gates of the netherworld shall not prevail. What must have been going through Peter's mind when Jesus told him that one day he would be in charge of the church? He probably felt some pride and pleasure, similar to the way a student might feel when his teacher singles out his work on a test. He was probably also excited to have been assigned a leadership role among the apostles. It probably sounded more prestigious than his job as a fisherman. What Peter couldn't foresee were all the difficulties, conflicts, and mistakes he would have to deal with before and after taking up his new role. Experiencing the shame of denying Jesus, mourning Jesus' death, settling disagreements among the early church members, and suffering his own martyrdom. Do you know what else he couldn't foresee? That he would become the first leader of the world's oldest and largest institution, the church. Peter couldn't have imagined that the most famous church in the world would be named after him or that his name would be known worldwide more than 2,000 years after his death. Of course, this feast is not a celebration of St. Peter's life. What this feast does celebrate is God's grace at work in Peter and his successors. It celebrates their role as teachers and guardians of the truth that Jesus handed on to Peter and the apostles. These are truths that Peter himself saw unfolding in real time during his life. The truths of salvation that flow from Jesus' death and resurrection. Over the centuries, the church has had its share of scandals and corruption as well as its shining moments. But if you ever find yourself discouraged, 
remember Jesus' words. Take comfort in knowing that when it comes to the church, sin won't have the last word. Jesus will. His grace, the same grace that sustained Peter and his successors, will continue to sustain the whole church. It will always find a home in the hearts of the humble and the faithful. Holy Spirit, keep protecting your church from the darkness both within and without. Amen. We are God's hands, feet, and voice. May his peace rest upon you as you go and announce the gospel of the Lord in your words and deeds. Thank you for joining today. Abundant blessings upon you and yours. Amen. We close as always in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hello, I'm Shirley, residential realtor for many years. As a professional, I welcome and encourage you to contact me whether you are buying or selling a home. Or if you know like-minded people like yourself that you want me to help guide through this overwhelming process. Whether in the Dallas Metroplex or across the country, I'd love to assist in your real estate needs. Click the link in the description below to land on my website for a plethora of real estate information. Thank you and blessings upon you and yours.